Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Beaky with the Elder Scrolls Legends Central and I'm back once again with another community focused video. For you today, I'm going to combine two community questions into one video and maybe even answer a question that many of you guys who have watched my videos have wanted to know. Probably the most important one is going to start right here from Grant. Let's look at what he sent me and asked me right here. So he says, hello, I'm new to the game and found your channel. Thank you for all the great videos. Well, I'm glad to make them. I hope this one helps you out as well. I have to ask, what is the mod slash plugin you use to show your cards in game? The cards that have and slash have not been drawn. That really helped me in Hearthstone, but I have not had no luck finding it in the Elder Scrolls Legends. Thank you. And I'm not surprised that he's not been able to find a deck tracker for the Elder Scrolls Legends because unfortunately search optimization for deck trackers and Elder Scrolls Legends doesn't instantly come up with the best results. But we're going to try to help him out today and at the same exact time we're going to help out another player from the Discord community. Bam! Right here. So here we're looking at Discord guys and it's called the Elder Scrolls Legends Tavern. That's the Discord for our community here. You guys have come chat, get custom cards, welcome membership cards and so on and so forth. And I was asked to check out this deck, my opinion. Now I know he is a new player so he doesn't have three copies of every single Legends and all that. So I'm definitely going to give him like a deck review. So that's what I'm going to do for you today. But how am I going to get your deck right here from Legends as deck into the game? Well that's what the deck tracker is going to be all about. So I'm going to show you guys how to take this link that he shared on discord and import it directly in our game for elder scrolls legends so i could do the review well first thing first guys let's get on over to uh google so we can just show you guys how to get the deck tracker first of all so go over to your google or your search engine of choice put in universal deck tracker go ahead and search for that the first choice will come up right here it's going to be a github page now i know some of you guys might have never used github before but it is a trusted website don't worry you most most well, likely are not going to be downloading the virus, and I've tested this before. This program is perfectly fine. It's not going to get you banned in Elder Scrolls Legends or nothing. It actually um, is okay to use this in-game currently. And only thing you're going to have to note is when the game does get a new update, you're going to have to come back here and see if there's a new updated version of the deck tracker. But let's keep moving on down to where you go ahead and install it. So I know there's a lot of stuff on this page when you're looking at it at first, but you're gonna just want to scroll all the way down. You're gonna see that it works for um, Legends, it works for Hearthstone as well. But you need to scroll all the way down to where it says installations right here and just click on this little page right here, Universal Deck Tracker.exe. Click that. It's gonna bring you to this page right now. It'll tell you the updated version. We can zoom in real quick, and what you're gonna be looking for is obviously the one that says exe right here just click that and go ahead and download it and you'll be all set my little download thing popped up and press save to your computer once you do that we need to get into legends to show you the next part of the video so bam we're over here in legends now and if you look at my legend screen it just look like any other person's game of legends but in the bottom right hand corner um we're gonna make the universal deck tracker pop up now first thing first let's just go onto the desktop and i'll show you what the icon is gonna look like once you install it so here's what the Universal Deck Tracker icon looks like once you install it. Just double click on that. It's going to take a second to open up. Once that opens up, if you guys have noticed, inside of Legends, right down in the bottom right hand corner, it's going to say Deck Tracker and the version number. So now you know that it's actually applied to your game of Legends. You can open it before you start Legends or after. Either way, it's perfectly fine. So what does the deck tracker itself actually look like? Well, let's take a quick look at that before I explain the features of the deck tracker itself. So here we go. I'm going to bring that up on screen. Bam. So here is the Universal Deck Tracker. Now, it's just an interesting little program because as you will see off the bat, there is no set in this menu. There is nothing really to... Um, tell you like oh it does this in game only thing you really get is this game mode you can play in rank legendary practice gauntlet story chaos me you can pick which mode you want this deck tracker to show up in and that's about it other than that you just get basically simple stats of the decks as you start using the deck tracker over a long period of time and i use the deck tracker only when i'm streaming legends so this only shows that the the um the stats that i use while i'm streaming legends because i don't need it for when i'm not streaming because i need it what i use the deck tracker for is to basically show that you guys to see the video um, deck I'm using and to import decks besides that I don't you I usually know the the cards in my deck for the decks I'm gonna use for like rank when I'm playing offline by myself or something like that 
But anyways, let's just get into what it actually shows. So um, yesterday's on stream, I was playing a chicken RNG deck. You know, just a chicken deck to have some fun. And here's the stat. So I've had a 27% win ratio with that deck out of 11 matches. Not very great, but still, it was fun trying to do stuff with um, prize chicken. And over on the right-hand side, it shows you all the different types of matches you fought. Against a mage, archer, assassin, so on and so forth. Alter, assassin, scout, agility, spell, sword. So it gives you a lot of good information. Right over here for this other deck, that was the 50% ratio that somebody shared to me it tells you all that stuff and so on and so forth and it has a track of every single deck that you've ever played while you know Mima sat action at Saxon uh, just so on and so forth a lot of stuff right here for you guys to be able to see um what's going on here like this is the deck that I probably played the most while the um the tracker has been enforced I had 48 matches with the tracker up so it gives you a lot of great detail information how that deck does against different types of um battle so but how do you get the deck to actually showcase uh, that tries to showcase in game well let me show you guys that right now next so once you're in game let's just go ahead and play a match we're gonna go to practice so we're gonna use the chicken RNG which we'll is go novice press play and then as you will see in a second The deck tracker hasn't activated. Where is the tracker? You don't see your cards on screen. Well, there are key commands to the deck tracker, which is very key for you to know. So let me try to bring those up to you right now so you could go ahead and um, let you know what they are. So it's going to be F2 shows slash hides the player deck, but there's actually a little bug. So we just joined the match, but right now the deck tracker is not working, right? There's no deck tracker on the screen. This is just something I've noticed with the deck tracker. The first match you have, if you start the deck tracker after Legends is already running, it doesn't actually show up in game. What you need to do is just go ahead and con like, let's say if you're doing a practice match, just concede the match, restart the, go ahead get into another match and it should pop up right away. So watch. It doesn't show up in the first match. I don't know why that is. It's just a little bug that always happens if you start after Legends is already running. Not sure why, but I just wanted to point it out because I know some people are going to run into it and just get freaked out. It's not working. It's not working. Just wait till your second match or if you're playing practice, just show up now. See, look, boom. Now the deck tracker shows up when I press F2. So once again, F2 is the key to show the deck tracker. And this is very key. And this is going to be very important depending on the resolution you're playing on on PC because you're gonna to need to be able to scale the deck tracker to how big you want it to be. So right over here, you have to click the little corners off the deck tracker to zoom in. Sorry, it's always hard to do it and know exactly which one. Oh, let me just keep my cards. Cause you can make it bigger or smaller. Hold on. So this is the stuff that I don't wanna see. Right here, the bottom left hand corner, you could drag this to make the deck tracker bigger, bigger, bigger. You can make it smaller. And it's, it is kind of hard to do this. And be careful because you can make it so big that it's really kind of hard to make it back smaller. Like I see, it's just it's just one of the little annoying features off the deck track. And I do want to actually show you guys stuff like this because I know some of you guys are going to run into it and just to kind of like get really annoyed. But you're going to have to find a corner where you could click on it and it'll expand it or make it smaller, bigger, and so on and so forth. Okay, let's talk about some other stuff, all right? So once again, F2, show it, hide it. Then you could go ahead with F3. That shows your opponent's deck. It doesn't show you what cards are in your opponent's deck. It just shows basically what cards your opponent has played. So if you're playing against AI, it shows that the three cards that the opponent has played so far are those three right there. Same thing, you can make the smaller or bigger. It's kind of hard. Like I said, you have to click the very corner of it to really get the best grasp of it. If you're playing on a high resolution, the 1080p, it's a little bit easier. But right now, just I'm playing 1080p. But either way, we're going to put this right up here. So if you want that there, if you don't want it, press F2 to get rid of it. Um, let me say F3, sorry. F4 gives you some more statistics. So right here we have Chicken RNG. Now it has a zero, uh, one zero percent win ratio because we started. I deleted. You could delete the um the statistics if you reorganize the deck, which I will show you guys that in a second. But it shows the name of the deck up here, the total win rate. Then you can press it again, and it just hides it. That's a That's basically all it is. If you press F5. You get to change how it displays the cards in your deck. You can circle through it. The current count of cards, just, just different ways of displaying the number. F6 gets rid of the bottom right here. This is what's gonna be most important probably to some new players. If you don't remember every single card in your deck, I'll try to make it a little bigger right now so you guys can see it. Like I said, this is kind of this is the most annoying thing about the deck tracker. I don't know how to make it scale in size as easily as I would prefer. But right over here, as you guys will see, this is guards, prophecies, 
and so on and so forth. The next chance of drawing a card. So as this deck has more cards that are all the agility attribute, the chances are the next card I'm going to draw is going to be 51% is going to be a green agility card, and only 38% is going to be a strength card. So and it shows you the prophecy chance as well. So you have 13% chance of prophecy. I'll end the turn right now and see when my opponent hits me. We have a 13% chance. Let's see if we get lucky. No, we don't. We still have 13%. And I have four, uh, 24 percent of guards. And so on and so forth. That's how this the thing works. And then once again, I had a 51% chance that the next card was going to be a green card. And it really did actually come out to be a green card. So that's just how the deck tracker basically works right there. You can hide this stuff if you don't want to see it. And so on and so forth. So you just got to remember the F2 key shows and hides it. Your deck. F3 key hides the opponent's cards that they have played so far. F4 key, once again, hides the name of the deck and the win ratio. And then you can change between how you want the amount of cards left in the deck to be displayed. And then you can hide the bottom right there. So that's how the deck tracker works when you're in game. But the most important feature of the deck tracker is not really this to me. It's actually the process of importing a deck. So let's go ahead and show that right now and able to review the deck that I was asked to check out. So let's look at that now. Let's bring that up on screen. Bam. So here we are with the Universal Deck Tracker. And these two buttons down here are super important. So let's talk about first uh, Export Full Collection. If you click this button, right, it will let you be able to get this little screen that gets popped up. I'll show you right now. Right here. It shows Collection Exported to Clipboard. What does that mean? It means that, let's say if we open up WordPad, which I will do right now for you. Um, just sorry. Okay, so I'm going to work up, open up WordPad just to show you what this looks like. So here we are with a WordPad uh, clean sheet. If we press Control V now, or click right click paste, it will bring out a really long list of cards like Astrid and so on. This is your whole entire collection of every single card that you own in the Elder Scrolls Legends that moment. With this information, you could go over to Legends-Dex, which I'll show you guys next. So let's bring up Legends-Dex. And you will be able to see this now. Let's take a look. So I can show you guys exactly why you would want to export your collection. This is a super useful feature, guys. Super, super useful. So here we are on Legends Dash Decks. Let's make it a big so you guys can see what exactly what it looks like. I'll even make my camera in front right there. Bam. So let's say you on Legends Dash Decks and you want to build a deck. Let's say I'm going to go to a Crusader's deck. I don't know. Just let's say, I'm just going to use Crusader as an example. Now you're scrolling through the deck, right? You have never imp you imported your collection. So it's not going to say this little thing right here. See where the red is? The red means that I am missing cards. I am missing these cards. So let's click on this. What does that really tell me? That means that if I'm going to make this deck right here, right down here, it shows that I am missing one copy of this specific card. I'm like, oh no, I don't have the card. I can't make this deck. Or let's, like, let's go to another um, deck that maybe I'm missing some right here. On this deck, I am missing 2,400 soul gems or a Pacific card that I need to make this deck. I'm missing uh, two blood dragons. So that's what that does. By importing your collection, it lets Legends deck know that you have which cards and which cards you don't have for building a deck. So what you do with this, you go to Collection Manager. And once you go to Collection Manager, which is at the top of the screen, I know it's a little cut off, but it's right at the top. What you're going to do, right? is um click right here uh doo -doo -doo. yep click right here where it says you can automatically import it you're gonna get to this little box now you can press Control v again and every single card you have in the elder scrolls legends will be imported here import into your collection it's going to be completed it says awesome i know you guys can't see the awesome but i'll make sure you see it right now because my camera's covering it up but it says awesome and once it says awesome now let's get back over to that um crusader build 
Now, when I go back over here, I'm not missing as many cards anymore because I know I have certain, certain copies of those cards. So now um, I have uh, right here, Burn and Pillage is the one card I'm missing. But if I go to like the cards, I do actually have copies of Blood Dragon in my deck. But basically, I just updated the deck list. So now that I know when I'm going to build a deck, it could show me exactly which cards I'm going to be missing and which cards I have. So I know that right now I am missing one Blood Dragon because I, miss I have... Two is not really what's in my collection. I only have one. So it just give, keeps that updated. But let's talk about the next important thing. Let's say you wanted to actually put this deck in your game. But specifically, we're going to actually use the deck from the Discord for today. So we're going to click on the Discord right now. It's going to open up a new page. And this is the deck from Discord right here that the player made. Same name as you guys will see. So let's take, we're going to take a quick look at this deck real quick. It definitely looks like a very beginner heavy deck. And I'm going to try to help him improve this deck as best as I possibly can in a moment. But we have to get this deck in our game. So what, what do we do to do that? Well, it's very simple. The top of the screen where the URL bar is, right up here, you need to go ahead and copy the URL for the deck. I'll make it a little bigger so you guys can see it. Once copied, just right click, copy or control C. Then you're gonna close that out. You will close out, not that, but whatever, that's already gone. <laughs> you can close this out. Ba bam And we could get back into Legends. We could bring back up the deck tracker and we could click that very, very, very important button called Import Deck. Click that. And in two, well, actually, I'll show you exactly what it does in game in a moment. But just click that. It's going to take a second. Got to wait for just a quick second. Once that happens, you're going to get this next prompt that looks like this that says deck has been imported. And I'm sorry for the players that already know how to do this. I'm just very detailed when I make my uh, tutorial videos for new players. I go over just about everything. I just take my time. I'm not going to rush through it. I'm not going to just say just download this and go. I want to show you exactly how to do it. All right, so now that we've imported the deck, what does that mean? Well, if you go to your deck list is right here, you will notice I have a brand new deck. That's a deck that um, the player made, Mage Control. Now we could click on that deck and go ahead and make it. Well, play it. We could play it, we could edit it, we could do whatever we want with it. But there's something else important to note about this importing the decks, right? Let's say I try to import a deck that I don't actually have all the cards for. So I'll show you that right now and show you what happens with that. It should be very obvious to any longtime player, but I'm sure this is going to happen to new players. You won't have every single card in the game, and you might just run into the situation. So if you're on Legends S decks, and you see a, a deck list like this, so you see the deck list and you notice that you're missing some cards because you imported your collection. I'm missing one Smuggler's Hall. I only have two. What I got to do is just like normal, import the deck into the game like we just did a moment ago. Once again, I'll show you in case anything. Click the import button, import the deck, and you guys will see the difference. One second, I paste it twice. My, key, my keyboard completely sucks. I just got to wait till this get confirmed. All right, it has been imported. Now with that off the screen, you will notice this time it's not at the top of the list. Where did the deck go? It's like even if we go back saying that maybe the game didn't get registered. Even if we go back, it is just not at the top of the list like Mage Control was. What actually happened here is because you're missing one card, it does what Legends is supposed to do. It puts it at the bottom of your list and now we have to go into it because it only has 49 cards. So because I'm missing the one smuggler's haul, I'm not getting a 50 card. It's not doesn't come up instantly as a deck I could use it automatically. So either I have to get one smuggler's haul or just add one card to get 50 and just press N and now that deck has been done and now I have a markers archer archer deck or whatever it might be. Now with that out of the way, that is basically how to use the Elder Scrolls Legends deck tracker that is called Universal Deck Tracker. It's on version 1.069. So for you 69 players out there now anyways let's take a look at mage control and try to do a quick little deck review for this new player so let's look at what he has put together today okay so we're running one execute a firebolt a healing potion a moment of clarity harpy 
uh, Arrow Storm, Cunning Ally, Dark Rebirth, Mage Trick, These Ghosts, Shadowfoot. I'm ho how many actions are in this deck? There's 26 actions. I'm hoping you have Hex Mage, bro, if you're going to be running this many actions. Let's keep looking. Firestorms, Hive Defender, Lightning Bolt, Rift in Pickpocket twice, Arin, Lydia, Pearson Javelin, Thieves of Dreams, Illusionist. Okay, we definitely could improve this. We definitely can improve this deck. Let's go ahead and help them out right now. All right, so off the bat, there are some cards in here that you have that are excellent, like Shrieking Harpy, great card, Cunning Ally, overall good card as well. But you're making one of the biggest new player mistake. You need to have three copies of this cards, even if you're even if you're just started playing. And I'm, I'm because they're common cards when it comes to Cunning Ally and Harpy is just a rare. This should be very easy to get with Twitch drops, which I know you're part of my Twitch community, so you watch, so you understand what Twitch drops are. We're gonna try to clean this deck up for you right now. All right. So what I'm going to do right this moment, I'm going to go ahead and take a screenshot of the deck that you've made, and I'm going to show you how to improve it. Normally, I usually play with the deck before I give you suggestions, but I can look at this one instantly and give you some ideas on how to make this deck better. So you guys will follow along and see what I change. I'm going to put it up from Legends Dash Decks on screen right now. This was his version. Also, you could export, uh, I didn't mention it, but it should be fairly obvious. If you can import decks um, from Legends as decks, you could use the same system to export deck. And I'll, I'll show it though in a second, just in case anybody doesn't, well, what doesn't understand how you would do that, but I'll show you in a moment. That's probably the one thing I miss, forgot to mention how to export a deck specifically. But anyways, here we go. So this is his version of the deck and here, let's go ahead and see if we can't improve it. Let me take a quick look at some of the high cost cards and all right, all right, good, good, good. That's fine. This is great. We could keep the two ice storms, keep the conjures, it's fine. Um, all right, so we're gonna drop Winter's Grass off the bat. Keep Pierce and Javelins. Lightning bolts are fine. We're gonna drop the hive def uh, firestorms. We're going to Drop the arrow storm. All right. Drop the healing potions. All right. In in. All right. So I'm gonna try to keep this very cheap for you because, like I said, I know you don't have three copies of every rare card, and I know you want the deck to still be somewhat playable. And you look like you're trying to go for some type of control mage. So yeah, we could we could work with something here. So we're gonna add in three copies of execute that'd be a better working for you right there than having the uh, the arrow storm and maybe a little bit more consistent keep the fire bolts the moment of clarity i'm going to remove the moment of clarity a little too much rng right there you don't kind of need that right now we're going to add in one shrieking harpy so if you can work to get the soul gem to get the shrieking harpy it's going to make it a little bit better for you uh shadow foot uh, let's see. I'm guessing you're only running one mage trick because that's what you have right now. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what's going on in this moment. Uh, you're not really having much bodies on the field right now until turn. Yeah, you don't. You're really just playing very defensively until high turns. Hmm. Let's see if we can't help you out a little bit right here. Okay, we're gonna drop Mage Trick. We're gonna add two Ward Crafters. Let's get some two drops in here that could be a little bit more useful for you. You will find you have a lot of ways to delay stuff, but you don't want to play a Shrieking Harpy into anything on turn two. So the problem with just having Shrieking Harpy as your only monster for a turn two is that you won't have anything to play on your first two turns monsters wise you can't guarantee you're going to get executed you can't guarantee you're going to fire both warcraft is a creature you can play out even if you don't have anything else to put uh, um ward onto but if you have it you can play this card that on um, turn two fine it's good for trading and then on let's say turn five if you wanted to give high defender ward that's work works out quite well you can give cunning ally ward to trade with that works out well right there now, I understand why you have the Dark Rebirth in here. It's great for some of these creatures you're playing with. And it definitely works with stuff like uh, Conjure. And s but I'm actually, for you, I'm going to drop the Dark Rebirth. And I'm going to let you keep the Illusionist. The Illusionist will work quite fine. 
and the rifting pickpocket might work out well depending on what your opponent actually plays into so as it's a rare we're gonna drop the thieves of dreams it's not a bad card but a five at turn five I would you would probably want to either use um, illusionist on something like rifting pickpocket or maybe even wardcraft or a cunning ally to get another firebolt so like you get to turn five you use um, Illusionist here, you get yourself another Firebolt potentially, or use war you get Warcrafted to give Ward back to herself, or to cut an ally, or to hide Defender might be pretty useful, or if it's turn 6, obviously you use it on her, so instead we're going to drop, um, yeah, Thieves of Dream, and in place, I'm almost thinking to put another... Uh, oh no, we have to add another cunning ally. I didn't even notice. You're only running two cunning allies. Definitely threes be better because you are going to be trying to get as many of those fireballs to help you with keeping control of the board. So three cunning ally. Once again, it's another common card. So I'm going to try to stay away from um, legendary cards because, like I said, I know your rank. I know, I know, like you're not you're not having three of every single great card in the game I mean if you if you have Daggerfall Mage it's a card that would work well in a deck like this with something like Wardcrafter so if you could get Daggerfall Mages get that type of card with Wardcrafter being able to put War back on her would be quite useful uh, Matrix is a good card but a lot of times you want to usually run three copies of it so I think it's your you should be pretty okay without that because you usually use mage trick to steal your opponent's creatures i mean i mean draw cards but you're going to be playing stuff like rifting pickpocket to um keep cards in your hand so you're going to steal a card from your copy of a card from your opponent so that's going to give you a card to your hand so it's like you play a card but you get a card right back you play cunning ally if she generates those fire bolts you're getting a card back in your hand so you're trying to have a situation where you keep cards in your hand while you're playing cards out at the same exact time and that's what's really great about mage trick you know you do damage and you draw a card but in this specific deck i don't think that you actually are going to need that right away Conjures a pretty good uh, common card, so I don't blame you there. The Ice Storms helps you keep control. The Dark Rebirth uh, would be great for this situation, but I think you, you have Illusionist, so I think that's fine. Lydia as a guard is fine defensively, so now let me just think of how we want to win you this match, because right now you're just going to be poking your opponent little by little. So let's look at a win scenario. So just give me a moment to think and look through what's available. And then we'll go from there. We will go from there. All right, so another pickpocket wouldn't be bad at having three. We'll give you the ability to keep those cards in your hand. All right. You're still rocking 16 actions with so many actions. You know what? I'm not. I'm going to tell you to, as a common card, I'm going to say Hex Mage. With the amount of actions you have, you definitely could play into a Hex Mage deck. The executes Firebolts. Yeah, you could play into a Hex Mage deck. Hex Mage, you could play Hex Mage into even an Ice Storm, and Hex Mage survives. So uh, you have a fairly decent amount of turn five, uh, five drops right now. Ten is your, mo is your most cards. But all these five drops are not bad. Like, I mean, if you had to pl pick one to play, it just depends on the situation. You can play her if you need to get back an action. You play Hex Mage if you're going to go for attack. You play Lydia if you need the defense. Piss and Javelin, Illusionist. Now, the question is, do you play three Illusionists? And I actually kind of think you might, but let me just keep checking. Conjure is a great six drop. Your prophecies right now are nine. But Conjure is an epic. That's the thing. Conjure is an epic. And I don't know how many epics you actually have. So that's always an interesting thing to think about, too. It is an epic. All right, so. Crawling back to you. So I don't think your, your late game is, in, is anything wrong with this. Eight. Like, I, I usually you run more than one Dawn's Wrath. Actually, yeah, we could drop one. One Dawn's Wrath is not really needed because it's only one. 
these are fine. These are perfectly fine. If this is what you have, you drop the one Dawn's Wrath. It's great. You probably only have one. We could drop that right now. You know what I wouldn't mind seeing in this deck is this. Let me see with the cost. Arrest. Let me see if we could combo this for you. So rest. All right, so look, you could try doing a little control in the situation. So we could do this. We'll do three copies of arrest. Then we're gonna change things up a little bit. Do Dez. So it's a rare card, it's not epic. We're gonna cut back to make this a little bit more playable. So that's a fourth, it's a turn four drop. We're gonna drop Lydia. It's not a bad card, but right now you have more guards. So we have we have two guards right here that are fine, perfectly fine four drop guards. Rest being able to steal a opponent creature, then using this to have that creature um, become your creature might really work out with you on turn um, seven. She's able to drop the cost of the creature, so that should work out quite well. And uh, I'm saying only run two ice storms. You know, nah, yeah, you only three ice storms. And there you go, you have a 50 card deck. The question is, do you want to run another Illusionist? Do you have another one? That's really up to you. You could drop it back down to two Rift and Pickpocket if you want to run three three Illusionists. So you could use the creature that, in case you don't get him. Like, if you don't draw if you don't draw him, the point of Illusionist is you, you could lose Illusionist on whatever creature you use on the rest on and get that creature to be back your creature. But the advantage of using Dez, Drez is the fact that that creature, if it had items on it, powered it up, you get to just removing that shackle really works out quite well for you. But there you go. So that should be a fairly yeah, decent control mage. You're going to control the situation fairly well. You're going to try to play into late game to these higher level cost cards. But with all the actions you have, and I'm trying to keep it very common, you could use something like Hex Mage to go for the win because you're going to be able to execute Fire Shot, I mean Fire Bolt, the Lightning Bolt. You know, and this is the type of card that I like to call a bait card. Hex Mage is a card that your opponent is usually going to try to take care of immediately when it hits the field. So it might allow you to keep some other really valuable cards alive. Because you want to keep this card alive as long as possible till you could get a combo out with Regenerate. You're going to want to keep her alive. So maybe your opponent will try to take uh, use a Piercing Javelin or Silence on Hex Mage instead of using it on another creature that might actually be more valuable to, you to late game. Because you're going to go into late game and then you're going to be able to try to control shit stuff really well with Manticora, Dragonborn, and remember like the Dragonborn and um Illusionist combo works real well. I understand why you were using Dark Rebirth, but I would prefer you to have creatures that you could play out than actually playing into Dark Rebirth right now. So like on turn three, instead of like, let's say just saying in general, third three, turn four, I would prefer you to put creatures down on the field. Just try to have some creatures out there than having a situation because you have not, you don't have that many one drops. You don't have that many two drops. So when you start a match, you're gonna really wanna try to keep a Warcrafter in hand in case you're playing against a super aggro deck or you want to keep something like Executor Firebolt. These are the, like these three cards, like right here, Executor Firebolt or Wardcraft or one of the th cards you want to keep in the start of every single hand you play, just so you have something you could deal with early game if you're playing against a very aggro heavy uh, warrior, battle mage. You're going to want to have something either for trading or removal early game. And you're usually going to want to get these harpies as prophecy in most cases. So if you get a harpy early game, you might want to um, return it back. But yeah, I hope that helped you out. I think that looks fairly playable and I didn't add any legendaries so I'm happy about that trying to keep it into something that you possibly could get the cards of soul summon I think everything here maybe you don't have a rest but if you don't have a rest which I can understand then I wouldn't mind you putting back Dark Rebirth. If you don't have a rest, fine. You can put back Dark Rebirth and then use um, Dragonborn to steal cards uh, multiple times. You know, like stuff like that. It just depends on how you want to play. But I hope that helps you out. And I hope you guys liked this, today's video. More or less just a community video answering you guys' questions. Feel free to send me questions in Discord or on messages on YouTube or on Twitter. Anywhere you guys send it, I'll try to help you out. Try to do these deck review series as well. And I hope the deck tracker helps you out playing Legends. It's been your boy Beaky with the Elder Scrolls Legends Central. I'll be back with more Legends videos very, 
very soon. Till next time, like it if you like it, dislike it if you don't like it. It's all good. See you then. Peace out. Really, join the Discord. Join it. Do it. One of us. One of us. Ha, 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 ha.